welcome everyone to another lecture uh, in this uh, course we are going to learn about machine learning and its types we are also going to implement some algorithms like SVM algorithm and so so let's get started with the basic introduction of machine learning and we will see all other uh, applications and uh, everything so machine learning is basically that it's a field of computer science with the help of which computer systems can provide sense to data in uh, in much the same way as human beings do so in simple words we can say that machine learning is a type of artificial intelligence that extract patterns out of raw data by using an algorithm or method the key focus of machine learning is to allow computer systems to learn from experience without being explicitly programmed or human intervention machine learning tutorial provides basic and advanced concepts of machine learning so so it is designed for students and working professionals it is a growing technology which enables computers to learn automatically from past data it uses various algorithms for building mathematical models and making predictions using historical data so currently it is being used for various tasks tasks such as image recognition speech recognition email filtering facebook auto tagging recommender system and many more so this machine learning tutorial gives you an introduction to machine learning along with a wide range of machine learning techniques such as supervised unsupervised and reinforcement learning so you will learn about regression and classification models clustering methods hidden markov models and various sequential models so first i'm going to let this uh, course to be a uh, free so since uh, it is allowed only for 2 hours uh i can't um make a video much more than 2 hours if i want to set the course free so if you willing to uh, learn about these concepts also i can extend the timing and i can make the course to be i can switch the code to be a paid course so now you will see what is machine learning is so in real world we are surrounded by humans who can learn everything from their experiences with their learning capability and we can we have computers or machines which work on our instructions but can a machine also learn from experiences or past data like a human does so here comes the role of machine learning so machine learning is said as a subset of artificial intelligence that is mainly concerned with the development of algorithms which allow a computer to learn from the data and past experiences on their own the machine learning as a first was first introduced by author samuel in 1959 we can define it in a summarized way as a machine learning enables a machine to automatically learn from data improve performance from experiences and predict things without being explicitly programmed so this is what he introduced so with the help of sample historical data which is known as the training data machine learning algorithms build a mathematical model that helps in ma uh, mark making predictions or decisions without being explicitly programmed and these machine learning brings computer science and statistics together for creating predictive models machine learning constructs or uses the algorithms that learn from historical data the more we will we'll provide information the higher will be the performance so for it we should know the how does the machine learning work so a machine learning system learns from historical data builds the prediction model and whenever it receives new data it predicts the output for it so you can see uh, for a machine learning algorithm if i am going to fetch some past data past input data if i am going to fetch to the machine learning algorithm it will it will be doing some training so that training in the sense it learns from the fetched data it learns from the given data and it builds some logical models or the mathematical models it also uh, encompasses a statistics and many more mathematical models to solve the uh, logic uh, to solve the input given 
so basically what it does it uh, it learns from the past data okay and then it builds the logical model using statistics and many um, mathematical models and then when, uh, if new data is also given it all then also it produces it predicts the output for the new data also so that is how this works okay this overall works the accuracy of predicted output okay the accuracy of predicted output depends upon the amount of data as the huge amount of data helps to build a better model which predicts the output more accurately suppose we have a complex problem where we need to perform some predictions so instead of writing a code for it we just need to feed the data to gen uh, generic algorithms and with the help of these algorithms the machine builds the logic as per the data and predict the output machine learning has changed our way of thinking about the problem so this is the uh, basic diagram which explains the working of machine learning algorithm now we have to know some um, features of machine learning so this is the explanation i have given for the previous uh, slide okay the working of machine learning this is the uh, thing again if you want you can read this okay as i said uh, it learns from the uh, past data and it uh, builds the logical model and then it predicts the output for it now what are the various features of machine learning so machine learning uses data to detect various patterns in a given data set it can learn from past data and improve automatically it is a data driven technology machine learning is much similar to data mining as it also deals with a huge amount of data so you, do you know the concept of data mining so machine learning is also very similar to data mining okay because the, in data mining also we need a very huge large amount of data and uh, we used to search for a uh, data okay so machine learning is also very similar to data mining so what are the need for machine learning so the need for machine learning is increasing day by day the reason behind the need for machine learning is that it is capable of doing tasks that are too complex for a person to implement directly as a human we have some limitations as we cannot access a huge amount of data manually so for this we need we need some computer systems and here comes the machine learning to make things easy for us we can train machine learning algorithms by providing them the huge amount of data and let them explore the data construct the models and then predict the required output automatically the performance of the machine learning algorithm depends on the amount of data and it can be determined by the cost function with the help of machine learning we can save both time and money importance of machine learning can be easily understood by its use cases currently machine learning is used in self driving cars cyber fraud detection face recognition and friend suggestion by facebook etc various top companies such as netflix and amazon have built machine learning models that are using a vast amount of data to analyze the user interest and recommend product accordingly so following are some key points which show the importance of machine learning rapid increment in the production of data solving complex problems decision making in various sector including the finance finding the hidden patterns and extracting useful information from the data now so with this uh, we have learned about what is a machine learning how it predicts the output what are the features what is the need for machine learning in next section we will learn about the classifications of machine learning classification of machine learning so at a broad level machine learning can be classified into three types number 1 supervised learning number 2 unsupervised learning and the last one is reinforcement learning so we'll discuss about the various uh, these classification of machine learning one by one first one is supervised learning so what is supervised learning Super le supervised learning is a type of machine learning method in which we can provide sample label data to the machine learning system in order to train it and on that basis it predicts the output the system creates a model using labeled data to understand the data sets and to learn about the each data once the training and processing are done then we can test the model by providing a sample data to check whether it is predicting the exact output or not the goal of supervised learn learning is to map input data with the output data the supervised learning is based on supervision 
and it is same as when a student learns things in the supervision of the teacher. Example of supervised learning is a spam filtering. Supervis supervised learning can be grouped further into two categories of algorithm that is classification and regression. So in further lecture we will learn about uh, what is classification and what is regression. So now uh, supervi supervised learning is nothing but it provides uh, no, it understands the data set and then it processes the data set okay and it checks whether the extracted output is uh, the same as what it is to be predicted so that is what the basic role of supervised learning is about so example is spam filtering okay e in email okay we use to filter the spam folder okay we can filter all the spam so that is using supervised learning only Next type of next classification of machine learning is unsupervised learning. So as the name suggests, unsupervised learning is a learning method in which machine learns without any supervision. So the training is provided to the machine with a set of data that has not been labeled, classified or categorized, categorized and the algorithm needs to act on the data without any supervision. The goal of the goal of unsupervised learning is to restructure the input data into new features or a group of objects with the same, same similar patterns in unsupervised learning we don't have a predetermined result the machine tries to find useful insights from the huge amount of data it can be further classified into two categories of algorithms that is clustering and association so the only difference is between supervised and unsupervised learning is in supervised learning it is provided with the data set which is classified which is labeled and characterized but here in unsupervised uh, the training is not provided okay then training is not provided uh, without any supervision it finds its goal so that is what the difference between supervised and unsupervised learning is and the last classification of machine learning is reinforcement learning so i know i hope that you might have been familiar with the reinforcement learning is so reinforcement learning is a feedback based learning method in which a learning agent gets a reward for each right action and gets a penalty for each wrong action the agent learns automatically with these feedbacks and improve its performance in a reinforcement learning the agent interacts with the environment and explores it the goal of an agent is to get the most reward points and hence it improves its performance the robotic dog which automatically learns the movement of its arms is an example of reinforcement learning so like we say we have the some learning agents okay which automatically learn uh, okay uh, which automatically improves its performance with the feedbacks which is uh, fed with so example best example for reinforcement learning we can say is the robotic dogs okay and uh, we also need to understand about the history of machine learning so before some years like 40 to 50 years machine learning was science fiction but today it is a part of our daily life machine learning is making our day-to-day -day life easy from self-driving cars to amazon virtual assistant like alexa however the idea behind machine learning is so old and has a long history below some my milestones are given which have occurred in the history of machine learning like first we had the artificial intelligence then it was brought up to machine learning and now after uh, 2010 uh, we have something called deep learning so this was the history of machine learning and so on um, so moving on to applications of machine learning so as you see here so we have uh, these are the various applications like automatic language uh, translation for medical uh, diagnosis start market trading online fraud detection virtual personal assistant emails uh, email spam and uh, malware filtering self-driving cars product recommendations traffic prediction speech recognition and image recognition so machine learning is a buzzword for today's technology and it is growing very rapidly day by day we are using machine learning in our daily life even without knowing it is uh, even without knowing 
it such as a google maps google assistant alexa etc so these are the trending real world applications of machine learning so we will learn about the one by one so first uh, we will see what is uh, image recognition is so image recognition is one of the most common applications of machine learning it is used to identify objects persons places digital images and etc the popular use case of image recognition and face direction is automatic friend tagging suggestion facebook provides us a feature of auto friend tagging suggestion whenever we upload a photo with our facebook friends then we automatically get a tagging suggestion with a name and the technology behind this is machine learning face direction and recognition algorithm it is based on the facebook project named deep face which is responsible responsible for face recognition and person identification in the picture next speech recognition so while using google we get an option of search by voice yes i hope you might have seen uh, whenever you search for a product or you whenever you search for uh, getting a solution uh, or to learn about something we just google it so while using google we get an option of search by voice okay it comes under speech uh, recognition and it is a popular application of machine learning too Reg uh, speech recognition is a process of converting voice instructions into text and it is also known as speech to text or computer speech recognition at present machine learning algorithms are widely used by various applications of speech recognition google assistant siri cortana and alexa are using speech recognition technology to follow the voice instructions next traffic prediction so if we want to visit a new place we we'll take help of google maps which shows us the correct path with the shortest route and predicts the traffic conditions it predicts the traffic conditions such as the weather traffic whether uh, the traffic is cleared slow moving or heavily suggest, uh, congested with the help of two ways that is real time location and average time has taken real time location is nothing but the real time of the vehicle from the google map app and sensors average time has taken on the past days at the same time everyone who is using google map is helping this app to make it better it takes information from the user and sends back to its database to improve its performance product recommendations so as you search for a product in amazon or flipkart you immediately after a week or a next day itself you used to get a uh, similar uh, product uh, recommendations so machine learning is widely used by various e-commerce and entertainment companies such as amazon netflix etc for product recommendation to the user whenever we search for some product on amazon then we started getting an advertisement for the same product while internet surfing on the same browser and this is because of machine learning google understands the user interest using various machine learning algorithms and suggests the product as per the customer interest as similar when we use netflix we find some recommendations for entertainment series movies etc and this is also done with the help of machine learning self driving cars one of the most exciting applications of machine learning is self driving cars machine learning plays a significant role in self driving cars tesla the most popular car manufacturing company is working on self driving car it is using unsupervised learning method to train the car models to detect people and objects while driving e spam and malware filtering whenever we receive a new email it is filtered automatically as important normal and spam we always receive an important mail in our inbox with the important symbol and spam emails in our spam box and the technology behind this is machine learning below are some spam filters used by gmail like the spam filter which includes content filter header filter rules based filter permission filters and general blacklist filter some machine learning algorithms such as multi layer uh, perceptron decision tree navy bayes uh, classifier are used for spam filtering and malware detection uh, virtual personal assistant so i hope you know about virtual assistant assistant is so we have various virtual person assistant such as google assistant alexa siri and so on as the name suggests they are helping us in finding the information using our voice instruction 
these assistants can help us in various ways just by our voice instructions such as play music call someone open an email schedule an appointment etc these virtual assistants use machine learning algorithms as an important part these assistant record our voice instructions send it over this server on a cloud and decode it using ml algorithms and act accordingly next online fraud detection Machine learning is making our online transactions safe and secure by detecting the fraud detection. By detecting the fraud transaction, whenever we perform some online transaction, there may be various ways that a fraudulent transaction can take place, such as fake accounts, fake IDs, and steal money in the middle of a transaction. So to detect to detect this, speed forward neural network helps us by checking whether it is a genuine transaction or a fraud transaction. For each genuine transaction, the output is converted into some hash values, and these values become the input for the next round. For each gen genuine transaction, there is a specific pattern which gets changed for a fraud transaction ends. It defines it and makes an tra online transaction more secure. Moving on to the next application, stock marketing trading. Machine learning is widely used in stock market trading. So in this, there is always a risk of up and downs in shares. So far. This machine learning's long short term money and neural network is used for prediction of stock market trends. Medical diagnosis. In medical science, machine learning is used for diagnosis, disease diagnosis. With this medical uh, technology is growing very fast and able to build 3D models that can predict the exact position of lesions on the brain. It helps in finding brain tumors and other brain related diseases easily. Automated language translation. Translation. Nowadays, if we visit a new place and we are not aware of the language, then it is not a problem at all. As for this, also machine learning helps us by converting the text into our known languages. Google's GNMT, Google Neural Machine Translation, provides this feature, which is a neural machine learning that translates the text into our familiar language, and it is called as automatic translation. The technology behind the automatic translation is a sequence to sequence learning algorithm which is used with the image re recognition and translates the text from one language to the another language. So these are the various applications of machine learning we will see in the next section. Machine learning life cycle. So machine learning has given the computer systems the ability to automatically learn without being explicitly programmed. But how does a machine learning system work? So it can be described using the life cycle of machine learning. Life cycle of machine learning is a cyclic process to build an efficient machine learning project. Main purpose of life cycle is to find a solution to the problem or project. Machine learning life cycle involves seven major steps, which are gathering the data, data preparation, data wrangling, analyze data, train the model, test the model, and finally deployment. So we'll see about one by one detail. So the most important thing in complete process is to understand the problem and to know the purpose of the problem. Therefore, before starting the life cycle, we need to understand the problem because the good result depends on the better understanding of the problem. In the complete life cycle process, to solve a problem, we create a machine learning system called model. And this model is created by providing training. But to train a model, we need data. Hence, life cycle starts by collecting the data that is gathering the data. So ga data gathering is the first step of machine learning life cycle. Goal of this step is to identify and obtain all data related problems. In this step, we need to identify the different data sources as the data can be collected from various sources such as files, database, internet or mobile devices. It is one of the most important steps of life cycle. The quantity and quality of the collected data will determine the efficiency of the output. The more will be the data, the more accurate will be the prediction. This steps includes the below tasks such as identifying the various data sources, collecting the data, integrating the data obtained from different sources. By performing the, these tasks, we get a coherent set of data also called as data set. It will be used in the further step. So since we gather, we have collected the data, we, can, we have to start data preparation. So after collecting the data, we need to prepare for the further step. That is that is where the next steps comes. That is data preparation. Okay. It is a step where we put our data into a suitable place and prepare it to use in our machine learning training. So in this step, first we put all our data together and then randomize the ordering of data. 
so these steps can be further divided into two processes one is data exploration and next is data pre-processing so what is data exploration it is used to understand the nature of the data that is we have to work with we need to understand the characteristics format quality of data a better understanding of data leads to an effective outcome in this we find correlations gender general trends and outfares outliers data pre-processing now the next step is pre-processing of data and its for its analyzing so that is where comes data wrangling so it is a process of cleaning and converting raw data into usable format it is a process of cleaning the data selecting the variable to use transforming data into a proper format to make it more suitable for analysis in the next step it is most important steps of the complete process why because cleaning of data is required to address the quality issues it is not necessary that data we have collected is always of our use as some of the data may not be useful in real world applications collected data may have various issues including missing values duplicate values invalid data or noise so we use various filtering techniques to clean the data it is mandatory to detect and remove the above issues because it does negatively affect the quality of the outcome that is where we analyze the data data analysis okay we call it call it as data analysis now the clear cleaned and prepared data is passed on to the analysis step this step is further involves uh, three things that is selection of analytical techniques and number two building models number three reviewing uh, review the result so aim of this step is to build a machine learning model to analyze the data using various analytical techniques and review the outcome it starts with the determination of the type of problem where we select the machine learning techniques such as classification regression cluster and association etc then we build the model using prepared data and then evaluate the model hence in this step we take the data and use machine learning algorithm to build the model after that we can we have to train the model so now the next step is to train the model right so we train to improve its performance for better outcome of the problem we use the data set to train the model using various machine learning algorithms training a model is required so that it understand the various patterns rules and features also after training we have to test the model whether it is working correct or not like once a machine machine learning model has been trained on a given data set okay trained on a given data set then we have to test them okay test the model so we check the accuracy of our model by providing test data set to it testing the model determines the percentage accuracy of the model as per the requirement of the project or problem finally we have to go for deployment the last step is deployment we deploy the model in real world system if the above prepared model is producing an accurate result as per our requirement with acceptable speed then we deploy the model in real system but before deploying the project we will check whether it is improving its performance using available data or not the deployment phase is similar to making the final report for a project so data pre-processing in machine learning so data pre-processing is a process of preparing the raw data and making it suitable for machine learning it is a first and crucial step while creating a machine learning model so when creating a machine learning project it is not always a case that we come across the clean and formatted data and while doing any operation with the data it is mandatory to clean it and put it in a formatted way so for this we use data pre-processing task so why do we need data pre-processing a real world data generally contains noises missing values and maybe uh, in an unusable format which cannot be directly used for machine learning models data pre-processing is required task for cleaning the data and making it suitable for machine learning model and also increases the accuracy and efficiency of machine learning model it involves the below steps like uh, getting the data set importing the libraries importing data sets finding missing data encoding the categorical uh, data and splitting the data test into training and data set okay i have to split the data set into training and test set and then feature scaling so you'll see we will discuss all these one by one so number one is getting the data set get the data set to create a machine learning model first thing we required is a data set as a machine learning model completely works on data the collected data for a particular problem 
in a proper format is known as data set data set may be of different formats for different purposes such as if you want to create a machine learning model for business purpose then data set will be different with the data set required for a liver patients so each data set is different from another okay each is different from another data set to use the data set in our code we usually put it into a csv file however sometimes we may also need to use an html okay or xls xlss file so what is a csv file csv stands for comma separated values okay comma separated values files it is a file format which allows us to save the tabular data such as spreadsheets useful for huge data sets and can use data sets in programs here we will use a demo set for data pre-processing and for practice it can be downloaded from the website like uh, www.superdatascience.com slash pages slash machine learning for real world problems we can download the data sets online from the various sources such as uh, there are many things available online you can check it out so we can also create a data set by gathering the data using various api with the python and uh, put the data into our .csv file then number two after getting the data what we will do we will import our libraries how to do in order to perform data pre-processing using python we need to import some predefined python libraries these libraries are used to perform some specific jobs these are three specific libraries that we will use for data pre-processing which are numpy pandas okay matplotlib all these things we use okay for pre data pre-processing we use numpy panda pandas and matplotlib okay so first numpy so numpy python library is used for including any type of mathematical operation in the code it is a fundamental package for scientific calculation in python it also supports to add large multi-dimensional arrays and matrices so in python we can import it as import numpy as okay you can give any name for it nm here we have used nm which is a short name for numpy and we will use it in our entire whole program in similarly like in uh, matplotlib we use the second library is matplotlib which is a python 2d plotting library and with this library we need to import a sub library pyplot this library used to plot any type of charts in the python for the code it will be imported as import matplotlib dot pyplot pyplot as you can give any name for it like mpt okay so here we use mpt as a short name for our for this library and we also use pandas which is one of the most famous python libraries and used for importing and managing the data sets it is an open source data manipulation and analysis library it will be imported as import pandas as pd pd is the short form for it so after importing our libraries we have to import our data sets also right so we need to import the data sets which we will collected for our machine learning project but before importing a data set we need to set the current directory as a working directory so we can do it so and so okay we have to uh, set our current directory as our working directory and then we can implement all our uh, we can we can implement our import our data sets also after that we have to find the missing data that is uh, handling the missing data okay uh, if our data set contains some missing data then it may create a huge problem for a machine learning model hence it is necessary to handle missing values present in the data set what are the various ways to handle missing data there are mainly two ways one is by deleting the particular row another one is by calculating the mean value okay after doing after finding the missing data and handling the missing data we have to encode into categorical data encoding the categorical data that is the categorical data is a data which has some category such as uh, like uh, country and the purchased okay corresponding to your example it will be uh, followed so since mathematical machine learning model completely works on mathematics okay it completely works on mathematics and numbers but if our data set would have a categorical value 
then it may create trouble while building the model. So it is necessary to encode these categorical values into numbers. For country variable, what we will do? We have to use label encoder of class from pre-processing library. Okay. We can also set the dummy encoding, dummy en uh, dummy variables by using the uh, technique called dummy encoding. So these, after doing all these things, we have to split the data set into training and test set. Okay. This is one of the crucial steps of data pre-processing as by doing this, we can enhance, okay. That is by doing this, we can enhance the performance of a machine learning model. Suppose if we have given train into a machine learning model by a data set and we test it by completely different data set, then it will create difficulties for our model to understand the correlations between the models. If we train our model very well and its training accuracy is also very high, but we provide a new data set to it, then it will then it will decrease the performance. So we always try to make a machine learning model which performs well with the training set and also uh, with the test data set. Here we can define the uh, these data set as training set and test set. What is training set? It is a subset of data set to train the machine learning model and we already know the output. What is test set? Test set is a subset of data set to test the machine learning model and by using the test set model it predicts the output. Okay. And at last we can feature our scaling. It is the final step of data pre-processing in machine learning. It is a technique to standardize the independent variables of the data set in a specific range. In feature scaling, we put our variables in the same range and in the same scale so that uh, no any variable dominate the other variable. Okay. So that is why we use feature scaling. So these are the various uh, data pre-processing. So in next we will learn how uh, in detail about uh, the classifications of machine learning and so on. So in this lecture, we will learn about the supervised learning. So supervised learning is a type of machine learning in which machines are trained using well-labeled training data and on the basis of the data machines to predict the output. So look at the uh, example here. So as I already uh, given an introduction about uh, what is supervised learning and what is unsupervised learning you can pre, uh, you can uh, you can understand uh, what is given in this picture so first you we have many labeled data from that we can uh, okay from these collected uh, data we can categorize these labeled data as this the uh, there are uh, three things namely x again okay which has uh, six sides okay and a triangle which has three uh, sides and a square which has four sides so like this we can uh, classify we can uh, get to know the labels present in this labeled data and with these data we can train the model okay and by training the model it builds a mathematical model using statistics so that it can predict our output okay using some test data for example if I'm going to give the test data as a triangle okay if I'm going to give the test data as triangle then what the uh, what does that do it will give me it will predict easily and it will shows a square okay and for triangle it shows it as correctly as it is a triangle so this is how uh, this is the this is how this is what this uh, diagram explains about so in supervised learning uh, the same concept as a student learns in the supervision of the teacher that is what is there right By providing the input data as well as the correct output data to the machine learning model, aim of supervised learning algorithm is to find a mapping function to map the input variables of x with the output variables of y. So in real world, supervised learning can be used for risk assessment, image classification, uh, fraud detection and for spam filtering. Okay, so we have to know how supervised learning works. 
So this is how it works, right? The models are trained using labeled data set where the models uh, learns about each type of data. Once the training process is completed, the model is tested on the basis of tested data and then it predicts the output. Suppose we have a data set of different types, uh, shapes which include square, rectangle, triangle and a polygon. Okay, here we don't have any polygon but uh, assume I am going to have a polygon also. Okay, so then what will happen? The first step is to find, uh, we need to find to train the model for each shape. If the given shape has four sides and all the sides are equal, then it will be labeled as square. If the given shape has three sides and then it will be labeled as a triangle. If the given shape has six equal sides, then it will be labeled as hexagon. Okay. So now after training, we test our model using the test set. And the task of model is to identify the shape. The machine is already trained on all the types of shapes and when it finds a new shape, it classifies the shape on the basis on, of a number of sites and predicts the output. So what are the steps involved? First, determine the type of training set. Then collect the labeled training set data. Split the training data set into training data set, tested data set and validation data set. Determine the input features of data set, uh, training data set. Determine the suitable algorithm for the model and uh, such as support vector machine SVM, decision tree, etc. Execute the algorithm on the training data set and then evaluate the accuracy of the model by providing the test set. So this is how the supervised learning works. Next, how does unsupervised learning works? So before that, we have to know the types of supervised learning also. So we have something called regression and classification. So regression algorithm is are used if there is a relationship between input variable and the output, output variable. It is used for the prediction of continuous variables such as weather forecasting, market trends, etc. So uh, there are various types of regression like linear regression, regression trees, non-linear regression, Bayesian regression, polynomial regression and so on. And the other type of supervised learning is classification. Classification algorithms are used when the output variable is categorical which means there are two classes such as yes or no, male or female, true or false etc. In spam filtering we have the types like random forest, decision trees, logistic regression, support vector mission and so on. Okay. So, so unsupervised learning. So, unsupervised learning is nothing but uh, we do not have the label data and we need to find the hidden patterns from the given data set. So, to solve such types of cases in machine learning, we need unsupervised learning techniques. So, as the name suggests, unsupervised learning, it is a machine learning technique which uh, models are not supervised using da training data set. Instead, models itself find the hidden patterns and insights from the given data set. It can be compared to learning which takes place in human brain while learning new things. It can be defined as unsupervised learning is a type of machine learning in which models are trained using unlabeled data set and are allowed to act on that data without any supervision. So the goal of unsupervised learning is to find the underlying structure of data set group the data according to the similarities and represent that data set in compressed format. Example, suppose the unsupervised learning algorithm is given as an input data set containing images of different types of cats and dogs. The algorithm is never trained upon the given data set which means it does not have any idea about the features of the data set. The task of the unsupervised learning algorithm is to identify the image features on the its own. Unsupervised learning algorithm will perform this task by clustering the image data set into groups according to similarities between the images. So below are some main reasons which describe the importance of supervised learning. Like supervised, unsupervised learning is helpful for finding the useful insights from the data. And it is similar as human learns to think by their own experiences which makes it even closer to the real AI artificial intelligence. Uh, it works on unlabeled and uncategorized data which makes unsupervised learning more important. In real world, 
we do not always have input data with the corresponding output so to solve such cases we need unsupervised learning so what is the working of unsupervised learning okay so here look at this example look at this diagram so we have some unlabeled data like it is a collection of cats and dog you can see these two are the cat uh, sorry these two are the dogs and here are uh, two cute cats okay these are the raw input data sorry these are the raw input data okay let me take my pen so these are the raw input data now this part okay this part is where is the algorithm so what are the uh, uh, what are the components of algorithm okay it has some interpretation and it has some modeling okay uh, it has some models it is collectively only called as what okay it is only collectively called as algorithm okay and also it processes some data and then it predicts the output as uh, like dogs and uh, cats such like so here we have taken an unlabeled data input which means it is not categorized and corresponding outputs are also not given now this unlabeled input data is fed to the machine learning model and in order to train it firstly it will interpret the raw data to find the hidden pattern from the data and then we will apply the suitable algorithms such as uh, k-means clustering decision tree and etc once it applies the suitable algorithm the algorithm divides the data objects into groups according to the similarities and difference between the objects yes so what are the types of unsupervised learning there are two types of um, unsupervised learning that is clustering and association clustering is a method of grouping the objects into clusters such as objects with the most similarities remains into group association is an unsupervised learning method which is used to find the relationship between variables in a large data set so here i have given some popular unsupervised learning algorithm like k means clustering k nearest algorithm k n n okay hierarchical clustering or anomaly detection neural network okay i have given i have listed so many things so what are the advantages and disadvantages advantages is it is uses unsupervised learning uses more complex tasks okay as compared to supervised learning because in unsupervised learning we don't have labeled the data and it is preferable as it is easy to get unlabeled data in comparison to labeled data what are the disadvantages unsupervised learning is intrinsically more difficult than supervised learning as it does not have corresponding output the result of unsupervised learning algorithm might be less accurate as input data is not labeled and algorithm do not know the exact output in well in advance yes these are the advantage advantages and disadvantages of uh, supervised and unsupervised learning welcome back guys so we will learn about regression analysis in machine learning guys so regression analysis is a statistical method to model the relationship between a dependent and independent variables so the dependent variables are called as the target and independent uh, variables are called as the predictor with one or more independent variables okay more specifically regression analysis helps us to understand how the value of the dependent variable is changing corresponding to an independent variable when other independent variables are held fixed it predicts continuous or real values such as temperature age salary and price etc we can understand the concept using the example like suppose imagine there is a marketing company okay uh, so who does various advertisement every year and gets sales on that so the company in the last 5 years has the corresponding sales like Uh, for ninety dollars, it have thousand sales, and for one twenty dollar advertisement, it it has thousand three hundred, and so on. It has finally for two hundred dollars, how much sale is it has? Now the company wants to do the advertisement of two hundred dollar in the year of two thousand nineteen, and want to know the prediction about the sales of this year. So to solve this type of prediction problem in machine learning, we need regression analysis. regression analysis is a supervised learning technique so what you have to remember here is regression analysis comes under 
what uh, machine learning supervised learning technique okay it helps in uh, finding the correlation between the variables and enables us to predict the continuous output variable based on one or more predictor variables it is mainly used for prediction forecasting time series modeling and determining the causal effect relationship between variables in regression we plot a graph between the variables which best fits the given data points using the plot the machine learning model can make predictions about the data in simple words regression shows a line or a curve that passes through the data uh, that passes through all the data points on the target predictive graph in such a way that the vertical distance between the data points and the regression line is minimum. The distance between the data points and the line tells whether a model has captured a strong relationship or not. Some examples of regression can be prediction of rain using temperature and other factors, determining the market, uh, market trends, prediction of road accidents due to rash driving. So, why do we use uh, regression analysis okay that is what comes into your mind next so as mentioned regression analysis helps in prediction of a continuous variable there are various scenarios in the real world when we need some future predictions such as weather weather conditions sales prediction marketing trends etc for such case we need some technology which can make predictions more accurately so for such case we need regression analysis which is a statistical method and used in machine learning and data science okay uh, the other reasons for uh, reasons for using the machine uh, regression analysis are two it estimates the relationship between the target and the independent variable used to find the trends in the data it helps to predict the real or continuous values by performing the regression we can confidently determine the most important factor the least important factor and how each factor is affecting the other factors what are the types of regression okay linear regression polynomial regression super vector regression that is svm machine and next we have is uh, decision tree regression random forest regression uh, ridge regression lasso regression and logistic regression so uh so now as of now you know you want to know about uh the classification the types of regression alone okay uh be uh, clear about that alone we'll see what is linear regression first so linear regression is one of the easiest and most popular machine learning algorithm it is a statistical method that is used for predictive analysis linear regression make makes predictions for continuous or real or numeric values such as sales salary product etc linear regression algorithm shows a linear relationship between a dependent y and one or more independent y variables hence called linear regression since linear regression shows the linear relationship which means it finds how the value of the dependent value is variable is changing according to the value of the independent variable the linear regression model provides a sloped straight line okay here you can see we have a sloped straight line okay and we have some dots okay that represents the line of regression sorry uh, that are the data points and the line the straight slope okay the straight line slope is called the line of regression okay it is the uh, mark across independent variables x and dependent variables y so in this we also know mathematical formula okay y equal to a naught plus ax plus epsilon where y is the dependent variable target variable x is the independent variable a naught is the slope of the line intercept is otherwise called a slope okay a naught is the slope a1 is the linear regression coefficient and this is the uh, epsilon is from random error the values for x and y variables are training data sets for linear uh, regression model represent representation we have some types of linear regression that is simple linear regression and multiple linear regression what is simple linear regression if a single independent variable is used to predict the value of a numerical dependent variable then such a linear regression is known as simple linear regression if more than one independent variable is used to predict the value of a numerical independent variable then such a linear regression algorithm is called multiple linear regression so as of now you have to understand these alone so we will see in next section Thanks. So, welcome everyone. So, 
first you have to open your browser and search for uh, collab okay so I have already done a, a project okay I have already saved my work so I have saved in this okay day one numpy like that I have saved so it takes some time for loading so once it's open okay mm. so you can do you can or you can learn this machine learning concepts uh, in uh, by installing Jupyter notebook or uh, if you are a very fresher okay very beginner you can also use uh, uh, collab okay so like this you can open your collab and uh, I have already did some uh, set of uh, examples to illustrate for you now so I will be explaining each and everything don't be uh, afraid I'll be explaining everything so here this is the cell or this is the workspace okay here I can I can click here and I can start to write some title here okay or anything I want to do I can uh, write over here okay so that is what this place is about okay now I'm going to give uh, like example one that is the title I'm going to give and uh, okay that's all that will be a text okay if I'm going to give a code I have to click this yeah okay for this title I'm going to give a code so I am going to click that so this thing opens here now here I can give any Python code I want for as a beginner let me give print of uh, uh, hello learners so everyone knows what this uh, outputs right so to run this I can go and uh, give uh, run all means it runs ev every cell okay so you can give you can select like this okay run selection you can select and run this or for the best you simply click on this symbol here okay this is the symbol okay which says uh, run cell okay only this current section this current cell alone will be getting executed so I'm going to click this okay it takes uh, time to run you can you could see here connecting initializing you can uh, now it's connected and says now here it is a output it says hello learners so this is a simple okay uh, program I have code uh, I hope um, um, some of them might be very very familiar with the school lab for those who are not familiar I have just shown an introduction on how to use this now moving on that I have given a I have created a list okay I'm going to say how to create a list so here if you see this is the output okay I want I can remove that okay here all these things are the output okay this is the program and this is the output now just I'm going to give us create a simple list and print the list okay so list name is going to be L L equal to 5 comma 6 comma 7 so I'm going to print L I can give simply L it will print the output as expected or else I can also give here as print of L and so it will print the same or I can simply give it as L so that it prints again the same result it gives me the same results so this is how I can create a array and print it now how to pass in a list directly so for that I can import numpy so the syntax is import numpy as some variable name for that numpy I have to specify here so I am going to name the numpy as np so input numpy as np so wherever uh, in my entire uh, uh, work okay in my entire this work page wherever I needed this uh, numpy I can call it using np 
okay i don't want to type uh, n u m uh, p y okay i don't want to write it completely completely as numpy rather i can import it using i can just call it using n p okay and you might be also familiar with the libraries we use for uh, machine learning okay python libraries we use for machine learning like numpy pandas and uh, matplotlib as i discussed in the previous lectures now here i see for uh, passing it in a list directly what i have did is first i have imported numpy okay so again i have created a list okay i have named the list as my list okay equal to 1 2 3 and that i'm going to save it in another list so x equal to np dot numpy dot array of my list so here i have directly passed my list as an array okay this is the list i'm going to pass i have directly passed it as an array and and so if i execute this what i will get i will get 1 2 3 as such okay i will get it as an array array of 1 2 3 so this is how it works a once again okay yes this is how it works and now if you see i want to to uh, yes i will give another thing like y okay like x i printed now i'm going to create for y y equal to np dot array of uh, here i have given uh, the elements as 1 2 3 right here let me give it as 4 5 6 i am going and then i am going to print off y okay or i can just type y now what it will print it will execute 456 array of 456 yes now how to pass okay a list of list to create a multi dimensional list okay list of list to create a 2d array multi dimensional array is one or more array okay so multi dimensional array how i can create so this is one array and here is the another array so for that i am going to uh, give it in m okay m equal to np dot array of i have passed two array okay 7 8 9 and uh, 10 11 12 less another array. another list okay two list i have have here so now if i print m what will it will print it will print array of 7 8 9 comma 10 11 12 okay as this as a list and this here again as another list now we see how to use shape method to find the dimension of array so if i'm going to simply say m dot shape it returns the shape okay that is it it displays the number of rows separate uh, comma number of columns so how many rows and how many columns it has two rows and three columns so m dot shape the shape method will uh, give me, will find the dimension of the array so that is rows and column so two rows here i have two rows and three columns so it that shape method of m okay m dot shape if i give it is going to return 2 comma 3 rows and columns now now you will see how to arrange okay that is not arrange it is a range okay a range is another method okay which returns evenly spaced values within a given interval so let's see what it is so for that i'm going to give n equal to np dot a a range of 0 comma 30 comma 2 so so as you see when i executed this what does it print means it prints array of 0 2 4 6 8 you can see the uh, consecutive values how it is getting displayed that is from 0 excluding 30 uh, uh, increasing step by 2 that is the meaning of this okay how does a range function works okay here those who are learning here might be definitely uh, well versed in python so how you might have definitely known how a range function works that is similar to this a range method also okay so 0 is the starting 30 is ex uh, and starting values included in the list okay included in the array and this uh, this value 30 is excluded up to that that is the stopping value increment by 2 so 0 to excluding 30 that is 28 i am going to increment by 2 2 okay that is how i have got now there is another method called reshape so what does this reshape do is does this it returns a array the same data type with a new shape so now example i give n equal to n dot reshape of 3 comma 5 okay now it returns the same data with a new shape okay that is 3 comma 5 i want three rows with five columns okay so now what is this n go back 
stays back and check what does n holds here is the n value n holds this array of 0 2 4 6 up to 28 okay this only i have reshaped as three rows and five columns so uh, 0 2 4 6 and 8 as a first row second row will be 10 12 14 16 and 18 okay and third row will contain the values 20 22 24 26 and 28 so three rows and five columns i have got like that i have reshaped my array that is what the help uh, we uh, that we use uh, reshape method and we have line space okay line space okay this returns evenly spaced numbers over a specified interval okay o equal to np dot in space of 0 4 9 so this is like uh, it has start value stop value okay as this shows some description right start and stop and uh, so you can see how it prints 0 point then 0 0.5 1.1.5 2.5 3 3.5 4.5 okay you, you uh, see you have to work on these things okay simply you cannot understand this you have to uh, practice all these things so that you will get the output so similarly i have given your resize method okay resize of 3 comma 3 this this array o i have resized into three rows and three columns that is what it means so like that i have given uh, np dot zeros of 3 comma 2 so that means it should have three rows and two columns only with the zeros okay i'm going to fill the values with zeros like that i have worked with everything okay so i don't have uh, time uh, to explain each one of these so i will um, share this uh, uh, collab uh, with you in the description okay so that you can work on that so in the next section we will build a we will learn about some uh, something called decision trees in machine learning